Well, no, my Heidi my my fellow Silverstream classmates, 89 to 93. Now, here's a special one for video number 37. Wow, we're heading towards the big 4-0, so awesome, guys. Now, we've got one of our former teachers joining us uh, today for a quick interview, and, and I thought it would be um, a good insight to catch up about what's been happening at Stream, but more importantly about what happens after you leave Silverstream and you become an old boy or alumni. And we have a wonderful thing called the Silverstream Foundation uh, now. And I wanted um, this fellow teacher of ours to explain a little bit more. He sort of runs the show there. I've been lucky enough to keep in touch with him over the last few years. I, I have fond memories of him, uh, mainly as a PE teacher uh, at, at Silverstream. Now, the nickname he had was Sarge. He still carries it. Uh, he ran things pretty efficiently, and you know I, I reckon he's looking bloody well. So, guys, let's please give a hand and uh, introduce the one and only Sarge, Michael O'Leary. Mike Leary, O'Leary, how are you? Very good, thanks, uh, Eugene. Especially uh, congratulations on this wonderful initiative you're doing, uh, getting everyone together and uh, supporting the foundation and the dinner coming up. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Mike, for everything you've been doing. Um, the, the guys won't know, um, but over the last decade plus, you've been doing a huge amount of work of reconnecting old boys, setting something up that really wasn't there, really. Um, and, you know, the foundation and the old boy connections have really come together quite strong. And a lot of it, I know it has, has got a lot to do with you. So thank you very much for all the work that you've been doing. No problem at all. It's just been so superb, really, because after speech 23 years on the teaching staff, I was tapped on the shoulder from Brian McGuinness, who was the um, actual uh, Board of Trust, Board of Proprietors uh, chair, uh, on the basis that we were going to try and set up uh, a sort of structure in preparation for putting up our new gymnasium. Because as you know, being an integrated Catholic school, we don't have all the support financially from the government, so we had to raise funds. And so this was the initiative that really kicked it off. And uh, and we'd been agitating for this, uh, a number of the PE staff over a period, long period of time, because as you know, uh, in your time at the college and you guys out there, that little uh, gymnasium down in the bottom, which was built in 1953, I think it was, uh, concrete all around and a wooden floor, very, very cold. You know, I remember sometimes going in, in the mornings, it would be uh, maybe four degrees outside, you know, in those frosty mornings in the middle of winter. And of course, it was probably about two degrees inside. So uh, wow. certainly we've been waiting a long time, which we were very fortunate. And that's how the foundation really set itself up. Wonderful. Now, a lot of the guys won't know, but you loved us so much that you actually gained a son-in-law from um, <laughs> from Silverstream. So your daughter, Anna, Anna O'Leary, and for those who don't know, Anna was a phenomenal cricket player, played for New Zealand um, in sort of the early um, 2000s. And she married Andrew Smith or Andy Smith, the son of Bruce and brother of Greg. So you, you can't get rid of us either way, Mike. Exactly, exactly. No, it's great to have those connections uh, with the Smith family and basically the wider Silverstream community because all those different uh, connections through right through the time, you know, the different, uh, with their own two boys going through the college and all their friends, um, both uh, Philip who graduated in 99 and Ollie was, who was the head boy in 2001. Uh, and all their friends and um, and the connections I had through all the coaching and the various uh, codes through the athletics and then latter years I ran the cricket for about ten years and um, and that was fantastic too. So it, it is uh, it is one big family and that's what we like to identify really the um, the alumni now we know it as which is inc inc incorporating across the board not only old boys but their families and. Um, and their friends and that type of thing and uh and they pop up all over the place you know for instance we we're in hamner there we recently and uh ended up by talking to this couple and there come down from part it turned out to be um tim dwyer's uh, parents and 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 kieran had been at that college in the early 60s so and then at the weekend i was had a big 70 birthday in queenstown and we took a flight out to milford and the young university student she was on the plane and i was just talking about this uh, job that I do here and she said oh my dad went to Silverstream and he was a guy late here from Nelson so they pop up everywhere we're everywhere yeah now you mentioned uh, and look congratulations you, you just turned 70 last week can I say mate you look fantastic so all those years of keeping fit and healthy have really paid off you're doing well 
Oh, thanks very much. Yes. Uh, oh, the body's starting to fall apart a bit now. You know, you've got to book in about, about once a week for a hospital visit for something. Yesterday it was the eyes and previous to that was a hernia, but, but that's that's life. We all get old. <laughs> yeah. All right. A couple of questions for you. Now, yep. um, before I talk about the future and where we're going, let's just take it back a bit. So, of course, our year group, 89 to 93. Um, now, you mentioned you did 20 plus years at, at Silver Stream. Now, look, I know you probably get asked this question all the time, but the our year group, is there anything or one in particular or events that, that you can remember of our particular five-year group? Oh, there's so many, you know, it was just superb. You know, each year group would come in. First thing I would do is I'd sort of I'd look at the lads, the third form group coming in. And in my own mind, I'd sort of say, I wonder who would be the head boy in five years' time. And I remember very vividly, actually, sort of going through the group and um, Colin Hancock sort of uh, raised his sort of hand very early on as a third form even, I think, you know, when you teach the, the lads. And uh, so I earmarked him and sure enough, further down the track, uh, he ended up the head boy. So that was a, a, was a bit of a milestone. And, All right, uh, well, sort of just, just on that, and, you, and you're very wise because Colin ended up being a wonderful head boy for us. Did you earmark your own son? No, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't. You can't do that sort of thing. <laughs> but it sounds like he but, did a wonderful anyway. You must have been proud when yeah. he became him. Oh, for sure, absolutely. And one of the, one of the things was my father went through St. Pat's Town, and at the time uh, we lived in Lower Hutt, just around the road from St. Bernard's when we were growing up in the sixties, and uh, he wanted me to come up to Silverstream, but I said, "Oh, I'm only walking distance St. Bernard's," and at that time, if you're a day boy, um, I'm not sure when it went out, but you'd have to come up. On a Saturday morning for classes, um, and because in those early '60s and right through to the '70s and even to your year, predominantly it was a boarding school. So, um, so that was the uh, rationale for that Saturday morning classes. Yeah. Yep. No, but going back to yep. the various individuals, and um, you know, I can sort of see many of them, and when, especially when you could bring them on the interviews, you know, like the Mr. Puniverse, you know, that was fantastic. Uh, we set up that arts uh, festival. And uh, Hugo was uh, strutting his stuff. That was a, a great occasion. Uh, and then looking at um, Greg uh, or Fiji, you know, with his uh, winning the, the Paddy's Mile, you know, he was very proud yeah. as punch for that. Um, so, and of course, then the athletics with Chris Fui, fantastic uh, long jumper, triple jumper. And then, of course, um, Mario Bazi, he's another one who's a good sprinter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, so uh, there, there are just so many. Uh, great highlights, you know, uh, of those boys, and um, and then um, seeing them all go on and develop, it's been a, a real sort of uh, fill up and a, 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 a thrill, really. Wonderful. Now, um, is it fair to say, Mike, like the school has changed uh, in, in, in today's uh, realm compared to when we we were at um, school? Look, one difference, for example, that I've noticed, um, and I think it's a positive thing, is the massive increase of Polynesian students that are at Silver Stream now. Um, certainly when we were there, we, we had um, representation, but it was pretty minor, to be fair. If I looked through the class photos, you know, we could we could count a handful of either Māori or Pacific Islanders. Mm -hmm. This, uh, in our days today, I see quite a high representation. Is that a fair thing to say? Oh, yes, definitely. And, and I think that's a reflection of our multicultural society we live in today. And, um, and that's, um, that's, you know, pretty, pretty prevalent. And it's wonderful to see where, you know, we had the very fortunate opportunity to, we were going for a cycle tour around Samoa uh, about three years ago. So I went through the database and found as a, a few of the boys had gone through Silver Stream and one was a Fupilo. Um, and his father, uh, well, we've got currently got Kelvin here as a student and his grandfather, was one of the prominent Samoan um, uh, people that came down in the early 50s. He went on to become the uh, ambassador to, to the UN. And um, and I we caught up with his, um, uh, his son, Patrick, who's a lawyer up there, and he entertained us uh, for a night out. And um, and a, a, as I say, you know, there, there's just so many uh, of the Polynesian boys. Uh, and we went into a homestay in, uh, in, uh, in one of the, um, the villages, and uh, there was a photograph of this young chap with the Silver Stream uniform on, and uh, the grandparents said, yes, he came down to Silver Stream. So now it's, uh, it's a very, very important component of our community now, the Maori and the Pacifica peoples. Yeah. And they add so much to the culture of the place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the haka that's done now is uh, 
you know, a hundred times better, I think, than, than what we did back in the day. The old Oe Tiki um, doesn't wouldn't quite cut it, but uh, also great to have a Samoan now um, as uh, rector at uh, our brother school town, um, um, which which is wonderful. Now you had an awesome PE department back in the day, and you brought up that wonderful seventh form PE trip that we did in the Able Tasman um, with yourself and Jody O'Reilly and and a couple of his great Irish mates. Um, you remember that trip well? Oh, absolutely. I just sort of reading through the report um, in the blue and white that uh, I think Jamie and yourself uh, penned. And uh, it was so superb, you know, because I remember, if you, I don't know whether you remember it, but we left Wellington. It was in September and it was a particularly cold, southerly day that we crossed on the ferry. And then we got the buses out to um, Ohau over there at uh, Abel Tasman. And we got to Abel Tasman. It was like going to Brisbane it was just so warm and so <laughs> mild because they missed those southerlies and then of course got in the kayaks and did those uh, uh, paddling around to the various bays, the Bark Bays, um, the Tonga Island went out there to see the, um, the, right. the uh, seals and, uh, and it was just superb you know and I just remember something that uh, something in the, in the report said that uh, one day we had a few few minutes and I paddled out to try and do some fishing but didn't catch anything so uh, <laughs> but no it was a great it was a great occasion and though the times that I think that um, schools are missing out on a lot now because they seem to be ended up by seem to be doing a lot more sort of academia type things in the classrooms and things like that but it's the uh, outside the classroom that uh, people remember more because boys are boys you know as you know they'll, they'll do the minimum amount of study but once they get out of school and get away and which many of you guys have done become very successfully uh, in business and finance and all sorts of areas, but not necessarily great at the books during those uh, <laughs> formative years. Enough yeah. to get by it, which I think is important. And yeah. uh, Silver Spring's always been lucky like that because of, especially the sport, the sport's been fantastic with the rugby. And I love watching the first 15 and they're doing so well these days. Tim uh, Mannix has been the coach and other old boys looked after them for a few years and they've won the Grand Slam a couple of years on the trot. Uh, two, uh, 218, 217, 218. Before that, the, the last team was that mighty 88 team, which just before you guys arrived, um, they were a very good, strong team. I remember that word. Okay. Tell us about the foundation, the Silver Stream Foundation. Now, what is it? How does it work? And yeah, basically, give, give the boys a rundown on, on what it is. Right. Well, well, the foundation really was set up to try and reconnect with as many old boys as we can on the database. So the first thing was to try and get a database of the um, boys that started Silver Stream in 1931, which we were able to, uh, previous to me, there was a, a chap that uh, came in, uh, Dominic Outram, an old boy, and he was able to, with uh, help, uh, download all the names. So basically got all the names, 13,000 plus. So over these last 10 years, I've been gradually sort of touching base with ones and, and getting their email addresses and residential um, locations and telephone numbers. And on the basis that to try and keep everybody informed of what's happening. And as you know, and some of the boys won't know yet, but if they go to the website, there is a page there on the news and I write up a, a newsletter uh, probably once a year or sometimes twice a year and pick out you know, anything that's salient. If I see something on the news happening, I recognize the name because as we go through the lists, you pick up all those names, like all the fooies or, um, and they think, oh, he might be a Silver Stream old boy. Unfortunately, also, as we know, uh, we have a, 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 a number of obituaries every year and if people pass away. So I put those guys up and, um, and, and then try and write a little uh, note to the families if I get the chance. Uh, and then the newsletters come out, you know, and then, uh, so on that website, we've got it sort of set out what it is, not only reconnecting, I think that's the first thing you have to do, reconnect with everybody, and then you can gradually build the idea of this um, sense of, you know, support, uh, and financial support is important, because at the end of the day, uh, as much as many people think, oh, they've got all this land, and they've got all this money, but they really, in reality, they don't, because the Marists now, uh, which owned the property originally, um, they uh, have to try and cover uh, a lot of the, the big outlays of, of earthquake strengthening. And not only here at Silver Stream, but at St. Bede's and down in St. Pat's Town. So all the little extra things now that the government don't cover, uh, and as an integrated school, uh, many things aren't covered, obviously. Uh, we've got huge grounds, fantastic grounds, but we don't get all the money 
required from the government to even maintain those. So little things that um, we can build up a bit of a fund for capital good works, um, not necessarily to maintain things, but to try and build uh, capital works up. Uh, it's, it's great because we, you know, we just need new auditorium or a new, you know, whatever um, when it comes to uh, art centre and things like that, which we would like to think, I would like to think anyway, within 10 years, which will have the centenary, it will be great to be able to say, right, we work towards something. Uh, obviously, the chapels are all up and running, but there could be a new art centre maybe planned and we could work towards that and by contributing uh, from old boys, uh, which would help that. So that's the major background uh, is to try and obviously build a base. If you can, as you can imagine, big college like King's Colleges and Auckland Grammars, they've built a base up and then they can actually invest that money, maybe you know, a number of millions, and then they can use that investment and that interest to you know, pay for scholarships, put, put money into buildings. Um, and uh, help even scholarships for teachers or employ teachers with an extra for sport coaching, things like that. Oh, look, 100% agree and really well explained, Mike. The first couple of things, and I'm going to make sure that there's a link uh, and, a, and an email address of, for the boys on how to contact. But look, what is the website and how can the guys get in contact with you? Well, the, the website is streamfoundation.org.nz and um, it's pretty easy to navigate your way around. And um, if you look through that, you'll soon see uh, how you can contact me. And the other one that uh, I put up, you know, like this, 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 even this last week, two, three boys have contacted me um, and I've put their information up on the foundation uh, Facebook page. And that's another way of contacting too, because all that information is there. And as 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 a way of of uh, maintaining that connection, if if you have got information that you like to pass on to me, I'm more than happy to you know if you've got something salient about your family or about your business or uh, all, all those little things that connect, um, do send it in, and I'll just advertise it, put it in the newsletter maybe, or on the Facebook page, or uh and the news items on the on the on the website yeah look 100 percent, guys and um what i'm going to do is encourage you I'll, I'll put in with this link um all the addresses and things and and for you to email mike with your current details your email address addresses occupation what have you so that he can update um his spreadsheet i've seen it it's getting bigger and bigger but we need to keep it updated and i'd also like to think too that silver stream boys look after silver stream boys so you know many of us have now are in business and businesses and mike can help um advertise um facilitate connections because you know if we can you know out there in the business world if it's a silver stream guy that i can give business to then i will every time and I know that uh, the other guys um, uh, feel that way too. And for you, Mike, we've got guys all around the world now, and and some exactly. of them, do, some of them doing exactly. some pretty extraordinary things. So, I'd like to think too that they might be able to help contribute to the foundation uh, in some way. So let's let's hope we can get something going. Now, yeah, look, going on for that, yeah. on for that in connection with um, connecting to each other, uh, even worldwide. You know, when we were over, uh, Philip was married there in 2015. So I just emailed all the ones I knew living in London. We had a gathering. Um, and I know that I think Andrew Howitson uh, said that, or one of the lads over there said they'd like to get together, even if they didn't know they're all silver streams, you've all got something in common. And, and that could be something to be established, you know, uh, once a yearly silver stream gathering in London. And um, there's so many out there. And, and I'm sure that, for instance, we had a little gathering in Auckland there uh over uh, easter uh, at eden park and there was some were about 30 odd boys and, and they were right across the age groups and some of them they all got something in common they all meet each other and they talk about uh, aspects of their lives and also their businesses and they connect up and, and that helps it helps that connection oh absolutely now one thing that you've done which i think is amazing is you're collating or you're giving a number to anyone uh, at Silver Stream that played either in the first 15 rugby team, first 11 soccer or football team, and first 11 cricket team, you're allocating them a number like the ABs have a number. I think it's a wonderful idea. How's that going? Yeah, well, that's a, that's a bit of a task, but I really enjoyed it because, um, you know, um, that also was stimulated by uh, two years ago when the first 15 of 1988 
decided to have a reunion. They virtually got everybody here. And Matt Fanning, a uh, member of that team, uh, he had a he's got he lives in Sydney and he's got a I think he had a boy at uh, St Joseph's Hunters Hill and he explained to me what what they did over there about when they have their first fifteen beginning of their season they get their allocated this number uh, similar to the AB one I said oh I'll have a crack at that myself so uh, I started by taking the boys who are in the official photograph I didn't go through every blue and white so if you played two games for the first fifteen you got a number so. Uh, hopefully, I've got it reasonably accurate, uh, and, and of course, um, uh, that right, right through to today now. So we're up over a thousand uh, boys um, uh, who've actually represented the college at the first fifteen level uh, in official season, anyway, official season photograph. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, you've got to make a cut off somewhere. So that's that's where it's got to today, and uh, it's quite nice because um, recently we had. Um, passing of uh, Sam and uh, Ben and Angus McCall's dad, Mike McCall last year, who was an all black. So I remember when I posted up that, he uh, had his AB number uh, and then I posted up his first 15 number too. So uh, it was uh, something a little bit uh, special. So there you go, guys. Um, if you played a uh, first 15 or, or uh, first 11, uh, get in contact with Mike because you've got a number. And I told Fiji his number the <laughs> other day and he was quite chuffed. So oh, uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's wonderful. Okay, Mike, uh, down to the last two. Look, the um, upcoming dinner that we've got some awesome momentum for the end of July, July thirty-one, the foundation dinner. Quickly tell us about it and how's it how's it looking? How's it going? Oh, it's it's really kicking off now because very fortunately, you know, over the last few years, um, I've sort of been trying to run this and trying to get other old boys to come on and make a committee up, and um, fortunately, uh, we're able to get three or four others now. We've made this little committee up um, and those guys are getting in behind it. And um, and so um, the idea of the dinner is what they call dinner of excellence. So this is just an inaugural one. So there's lots and lots of old boys out there we hopefully will promote and uh, acknowledge uh, further down the track um, on the basis that they have done so well uh, and make good role models. And it'd be great to when you come into the college, when you go upstairs in that old block, and you'll see some photographs of some of these more significant um, contributors, whether it be to the arts or the politics or sport or whatever. Because as, as you know, um, presently, as you go through the main corridor, you've got the first 15 photos. But there is, um, and of course, you know, I think um, that makes the community that much more special when you know that, um, oh, I didn't realise Bill English was a Silver Stream old boy, he's a prime minister and He's got an accolade up there on, on, the, on the notice board. So, uh, so that's, that's the uh, initiative behind it. And, um, and also obviously make it into a reunion. It's going to be bought old boys arriving that haven't seen each other for maybe 30, 40, 50 years, so, which will be great. Absolutely. A number of us haven't seen each other in, in nearly 30 years, 28 years. Now, just on the former Prime Minister, Bill English. Now, apparently, I didn't realise this, but he was a hell of a rugby player. Yeah, well, he, you know, he was in that 1979 first 15. And um, apparently in those days, they had that, I think even even in your day as a boarder, they had those runs first thing in the morning. So he'd get out there and uh, have to do the fitness wrap through the Pinehaven Hills and back again before breakfast. And um, and so, yeah, I think uh, when the, they actually had a reunion last year, no, 219. Uh, so it was 40 years since they left school in 1979. And uh, they had a good turnout uh, for their lads. And uh, obviously in those days, they, they weren't quite as big as they are today. <laughs> Physically, you know, there's some of the boys now, they can, they're packed down, well, packed down in an all-black scrum. Well, as you know, we've got uh, our re most recent couple of old boys there in the forwards with uh, Tyra Lomax and um, Asafa Moore. Uh, they're both uh, boys that are, are pretty strong now and, uh, and knocking on the door of the All Blacks, uh, uh, which is only three or four years out of school. Absolutely. Now, um, what's Sir now? Sir English is going to be at the dinner? Yes, yes, he'll be there. So uh, we've actually, he's accepted to be the patron for the foundation. So uh, so that'll be another way of uh, being able to uh, identify him as a, as a prominent old boy. Um, and I'll, as I say, there's so many others that we'd like to recognise uh, right across the border. I remember um, there's, you know, when I go through my database, it's, it's phenomenal. When all of a sudden, you know, you you read about this one or you Google that one and uh, so many, you know, like just recently, for instance, the Grant Quinn, um, he uh, 62 to 65. Well, 
he was instrumental in setting up the Special Olympics in New Zealand way back in 1981, I think. He, he took, uh, there was an article about him in the, the local paper there recently when they had awards in for the Hutt Valley. And uh, it was just so wonderful to think that uh, he was another one that's contributed so much yeah. to uh, a cause. That's very cool. We're, we're definitely spread um, all around the world. Now, I'm about to go live and do another two videos to Savo, uh, Glenn Bunny and uh, from Australia and uh, and Greg Watts, also from Australia, who, who you, you'll both remember. Look, yes, final, final question for you is, look, these videos have been quite amazing. Um, they've not only reconnected, but um, a lot of the boys have really opened up about their time at Stream, whether it be good or bad. Not everyone had a smooth run at Stream. Um, and it's, it's just been really cool. And, and some of them been been quite vulnerable as well, but we're all connected. What have your thoughts been on watching the videos and hearing the guys' stories? I've been copying you in on every video. So yeah, just wondered what your thoughts were. No, I think one of the biggest things that's come through to me is that everybody feels as though they're a real part of a brotherhood. So that they don't feel too vulnerable. Obviously at the time when they went through school, um, you would be if you came from a very small little community and you didn't know anybody and it was a pretty rough and environment and harsh and boys and boys and knocking people around that type of thing but as you go through the years you you find that you know you end up by having something really deep down in common and i think that religious background and the caring the way the marists have really put that into the um uh, into the feel of the place um makes people feel more comfortable and and it's been wonderful to watch these videos and to feel that empathy coming out, you know, uh, from various ones who have had um, interesting, well, you know, not so so good probably experiences at times, but um, the good times outweigh the bad, and then they feel uh, su very well supported. So you know, it's it's great. Oh, it's wonderful. Well, Mike, thank you so much. This brings us to the end. We're going to get this video out to the guys so they can enjoy catching up with you. We're just so happy that we're able to support um, the foundation. Uh, and and our school and um, you know and again kudos to you because I know you've done a lot of work and you continue to do the work um, so a lot of mahi there Mike thank you so much and thank we look you. forward to oh, no, thank you. celebrating and, forward to, and look forward to seeing some of the some of the suns coming through you know as I say I think uh, Aidan said uh, Finley came through the college and uh, and I'm sure there's more boys out there and it's wonderful when I go through on the beginning of each year and sort of say oh I know I taught your father <laughs> <laughs> that's right well there you go fellas let's see uh, catch up with uh, Sarge Mike O'Leary please get in contact with him I'll put details in for the foundation and once again Mike thank you we look forward to seeing you at the end of July thanks very much and keep up the good work thank you